Welcome to SickCast, brought to you by Sick Research Institute, illuminating every path. Guru Fateh, welcome to the SickCast. My name is Manpreet Singh. Thank you for being with us today. Today we have a special current events podcast. And with me, I have Harinder Singh, Senior Fellow at the Sick Research Institute. Harinder, welcome. Long time we didn't speak. How's it going? Uh, Shukar, Guru Fateh. Um, uh, things are all right. And given, you know, the kind of realities we live in in America and Punjab, you're trying to make sense of them. For sure. And I'm glad you're with us today because I know you take a lot of interest in what happens in Punjab. I know you've been there so many times. You know people there, people on the ground there. So today I want to talk about what is happening in Punjab, especially with the farmers. It's everywhere. Usually I don't see these things on my social feeds, but now even six in the diaspora, at least in America, are putting it on their social feeds. So I'm glad I have you on because we want to know what's happening. So let's get into it. What is going on right now in Punjab? Well, uh, as you said, what's going on is that there have been some bills, uh, farm bills, which have been passed by the Indian government, to be explicit, three of them. Uh, And the reaction to that uh, has been quite strong throughout India, but specifically in Haryana and Punjab because of the agrarian societies. And Punjab has taken the leadership role to talk about it. And I would say the reason Punjab has taken the role is because there is In Punjab, there is a lot of sense of historical wrongs. So when people are showing up in protests, it is obviously about these farm bills. It is also obviously about what has happened with the language of Punjab, not just with the water and farming issues, because center has passed new laws and they have been passed undemocratically through the parliament. And they've been given um, assent by uh, a president uh, who is quite compromised, you know, Ram Nath Kovind. And when you take all these things, they are being looked as upon multi-pronged attack on the Punjabi Sikh community. And for the large sections of the community, both Hindu and Sikhs, they believe this is grossly unjust and they must be opposed. So what you are seeing is an outpouring of that because in the line of historical wrongs with the Punjab. So let's talk about little uh, historical wrongs here. So before we get to what's in the bills and and, uh, the purpose of them, Let's talk about a little bit of history of how the farmers got here. I've heard for the last 10, 15 years, farmers committing suicide, farmers being in debt, you know, Punjab's water being taken from them. So what is, let's get, tell me a little bit about a history of like how farmers got here. We don't need to go back. Maybe we need to go back to 47 or something like that, but just a quick history if you can. Sure. I think we can, we have all heard of green revolution. So at least we can um, sort of, mention that and start from there. So Green Revolution is what was considered, you know, that India uh, through Punjab is feeding the rest of India, in some cases, even outside of India. And it became, you know, the breadbasket of India. But what people don't realize is that the policies which were adopted during, quote unquote, the Green Revolution, it created a lot of violence. Violence towards the community, violence towards the farmers who were the landowners, as well as a violence for the farm workers. Uh, Also, the social fabric, the kind of uh, violent practices it introduced, which we saw the result in 80s and 90s and are continuing to see in 2020 as well now. So that's one thing that the mid-level farmer or the low-level farmer, which means people who don't own much land, and farm workers, they have been slowly, what amount of money they make, the consequences of not making enough money because they cannot sell it properly. The consequence, one consequence of that is the level of suicides, which we have seen throughout India, specifically in Punjab as well. So that's the farm side of it. When we look at the Punjab side, what I was saying, the larger issue, which is now culminating through the farmer's bills, uh, has been that if you look from 1947 onwards, you know, the issues which Punjab had faced even when you want to make reduce it to an academic exercise, which it isn't, by the way, it affected every Punjabi. So in 50s and 60s, you saw that. In 80s, you saw there was a Taram Yudh Morcha. Then you saw there were divides created between Punjabi Hindi and Sikh Hindu and Akali Congress. 
including in the farmer movements which happened in 84, which people don't realize, uh, there have been many incidents which are related to Punjab, and it's a sort of a response to all of those. So farmers, 80% of Punjab's economy is farm-based. That's just a fact. So what is what you're seeing now is that issues which might have been along the religious lines of Sikhs or linguistic lines of Punjabi or lines on farmers or water's rights, they're all culminating now because of the historical wrongdoings, because 80% of Punjab is affected by the farmers, what happens to them. And this is why you are seeing that even the Ardhiyas are protesting with both the Jat and the Dalit <laughs> and the gender divide is overcome into all of these. My point in sharing all this is uh, the farmers are now at the forefront because people of Punjab, regardless of their caste status, regardless of their gender, regardless whether they're the labor or the shopkeepers or the artiyas or the farmers themselves, they've all come together to the streets against these draconian laws. So let's talk about these laws. What are in these bills that is causing this farmer uprising? I'm sure there's other laws passed that probably the farmers didn't care about or they just took it and still did their thing. But what is in these bills that caused this big uproar? Yeah, so this is where we have to understand some technical things. And uh, let me start with MSP, uh, which essentially is a minimum support price, which the government sets. And currently, 6% uh, of the MSP is claimed by the farmers. And mostly it is on the wheat and rice. And because 6% of that is affected by in Punjab, what is happening with these bills is very simple. We can argue and present at the level of uh, maybe we can, I, I don't know if we can break it down to three, uh, all three bills, but let's break it at least to one level. Which level is this? Essentially, what this bill has done is, it is one issue is that it's privatizing everything. Now, if it is privatizing things, uh, what is it is being discussed? They're saying that the private buyers can hold all the commodities for the future sales, which only government authorized agents could do earlier, and they would outline rules for contract farming and things of that nature. Simple point here is that farmers uh, will not be allowed to sell their products at a market price directly to private players. Government is saying this, but this is what they're questioning. And eventually what happens with all this is, let, let's put it in perspective. Another angle of this is that you are producing things as a farmer and you are selling it to government at wholesale price, which are coming through the farmers and their unions and other things called the Mandi boards. And what they're saying is, if you really want to make this open to private market, why not make it open to uh, including Pakistan? Because why transport something from Punjab to Tamil Nadu or Kerala when you can open it to Pakistan and Central Asia and who knows to Europe? So there are issues of that nature, but the larger issue is that uh, farmers feel that they will eventually lose their lands because they will not be able to sell at some minimum prices, which currently they were able to. They were already wrong doing, uh, at the receiving end of this. Second thing is that if they are not able to sell and these private companies will come in, the marketplace economy will take over, capitalism will take over, which essentially means the larger people who are aligned with the government, current government as they have done with other issues, now they're trying to do that to the farmers and farmers being primarily in the north and mostly in Punjab, this is a target they feel to bankrupt them, take them toward less ownership and less control of how much money they will make. And eventually you will see more suicides and things of that nature and losing of their farmlands. Okay, so let's talk about the a uh, political element here, because I'm kind of interested in that uh, while you were talking. So these bills that were passed, okay, I have a couple of questions that are coming to mind. First, did the people in Punjab, the leaders, did they not know what was in the bill before they passed it? Is this directly from the Modi government? I, I, I feel like this is a very capitalistic bill, kind of very American, but are the people like 
basically the farmers in Punjab are did they vote the people that are in the Punjab government now against so the farmers voted against their own interest to elect these leaders and now the leaders are saying hey by the way uh you know we're going to do everything to basically bankrupt you because that's what i feel that has happened so let's so, so to understand the politics of it what this, these bills are doing is they're creating a national framework to where farmers can sell this so farmers are currently already allowed to sell to private players in many states but what these bills are doing is they're creating a national framework and we have to understand this national framework business this is in line with the nda government led by bjp which is the ruling coalition government they are trying to create everything one one kind of a hindutva nation you know which is they are explicitly on the record saying that's what they're working towards imposition of one language of hindi so it's creating this one imposition on everything and this network this national framework is where most of the farmers are most worried about their concern is this will eventually lead to the end of wholesale markets and the assured prices which means they will it will leave them with no backup option so for example if a larger corporate house says we will only buy this for 100 un, you know 100 rupees of some units and right now the minimum assured price was 100 let's say but who knows tomorrow if that same national network will say we only want to buy this for 20 rupees and they are going to lose uh what farmers will lose out of this is they cannot return to the mandis where they were selling this right now so they're losing the bargaining chip during the negotiations which is the biggest issue so if i if you look from a farmer's angle they they feel they feel this is uh, there's a good attraction to uh, privatize these players because then you can look at who will offer better prices but they only want to do this nationally not internationally where they can get better prices and they only they cannot guarantee what will happen in next few years and eventually this will exploit the farmers and that's the fear this is what the farmers are calling that they will be signing the death warrant so the ruling party shromani akali dal of punjab in the center they were party to these conversations they were present when these were being discussed but i think this was a miscalculation on their part as to how much opposition will come from punjab and because of uh a miscalculation and for their survival now they left the uh, shromani akali dal led by the badals has left the coalition government which has created its own fiasco in the political electoral college but that's what has happened so uh, while government is saying that they are not going to withdraw this minimum support price we have to understand why farmers are suspicious they're suspicious because of this national network they're suspicious because at some point uh uh the small and the marginalized farmers uh they will get destroyed because they will have to hand over their agricultural uh agriculture and their markets to the big corporates and eventually they feel they will lose their lands i i just can't believe what what is happening um in punjab i mean there's people trying to stop things boycott things just doing protests everywhere every day there's a new article But you know what is happening that I haven't seen before in a long time is people coming together in Punjab in support of farmers, singers coming together, actors coming together, saying, "Hey, wherever you go, wherever you stand, wherever you want to sit, I am with you." And these are people with privilege, and so I have not seen that before. Um, what do you what do you make of that? And also, what do you make of you know one one um, I would say. uh if i could say a criticism on singers is there's a lot of jut music out there you know jut this jut that and you know we're on the big jeeps and we're here we're here now a word that they usually don't use in any of the songs is kasan and now every singer everyone talks about kasan 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 no one says jut so what do you make of all this singers coming together and also they're changing up their lingo a little yeah i think this is very welcoming because what we have to realize is the massive level of protests happening what singers have done is they have brought youth to them they have brought the prominence of the singers has brought the youth to it which is great because generally punjabi celebrities are do not take political positions but now they have taken a position because as i said uh, the farm industry affects 80% of punjab's economy and everyone is affected by it 
whether they directly or indirectly. So um, the, uh, the 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 Sans, the Mans, and the Wicks, all the singers who have come together, the ones who generally are, uh, as you were saying about jets and guns, uh, they actually have come together not just to work on their language to work with the Kisans, uh, but they're also fully acknowledging um, that what is happening in Punjab is uh, unacceptable. Now, what? let me actually get a little bit more into it from a singer angle. So, you know, when Harpa Janman says something or Ranjit Bhava says something, Kulvinder Billa, Shiv Jod, um, Avkash Man, and then I'm, I'm just mentioning some of the names and there are many more. Eventually, in fact, uh, we also saw Siddhu Musewala also talked about some of these things. Um, when they are speaking, they're bringing a particular audience and a particular attitude as well. And when uh, Gugu Gil writes something on his Facebook, you know, when he says, before an actor, I'm a farmer, and I also stand with farmers. And when Jazzy B puts out a video, they are basically, what they're bringing to us, all of us, regarding this movement is that this is legit. So there is usually one or two at best speak about any movements and Punjab have seen many movements, but in this case, they're coming together and they're improving their vocabulary and they're giving uncontested report to the level. If you listen to Siddha Lakha Siddhana and if you listen to Deep Siddhu, they also make a lot of sense. So they're not just saying we support it. They actually are understanding the intricacies of all this. So this is the part which is very welcomed and very fresh. The part which we need to be a little bit vigilant about, that there are people who have been working on these protests. They are the unions, the farmers' unions. So positioning of singers and the positioning of farmer unions need to be maintained in a very healthy way because farmer unions are the ones who have been raising these issues before they came to the uh, this sort of a front light. So singers are bringing the crowds but unions are the ones who have the maturities and the experiences to run it like a movement. And if we can figure out this cooperation of sometimes it's called left versus non-left, sick versus non-sick, we can get rid of all of these and we can say, well, this is about actually um, bringing together the deliveries for Punjab where historical wrongs have been done, including historical wrongs on farm workers and farm farmers themselves who are landowners as well. So I think those are the two things we have to fully understand. We must salute all the farmer unions who continue to do the hard work and have been doing the hard work. Uh, and now to make it a massive protest, what singers have also brought to it. So singers and actors do add a lot of credibility. You know, their stuff gets shared way more if a singer is talking on social media. So I'm in New York, uh, I'm not a farmer. <laughs> but I, I'm a practicing sick. So I'm sure there's many people um, listen to the podcast that are not farmers or not um, in Punjab right now. So why does this matter in, in the sick diaspora that's not um, you know outside of Punjab? Uh, why does this matter to me? And what can I do? Yeah, well, the simple answer is, I'm glad you asked this. Simple answer is it matters to you because 80% of sick still live in Punjab. The second generation, regardless of who they listen to in Punjabi music, is coming from Punjab. It's extensions through diaspora. And diaspora is the third Punjab. We are currently discussing what's happening in East Punjab. So there is a direct correlation from numbers angles, from behaviors angles, from impact angles, from emotional angles. This is why every Punjabi and every Sikh needs to be concerned about this because they're interrelated. Second reason I would say is, look, every party is interested in this. That should tell you, and I know every Punjabi and every Sikh gets interested in the politics at some point. You know, Akali is running from it, but it has created a very interesting sort of a leaderless movement right now where everyone is trying to capture this. You know, I was looking at how each party was behaving on Pagat Singh's anniversary, birth anniversary, you know, what Congress is doing through Captain Amrinder Singh, what Akalis were doing through Sukhbir Singh Badal, what BJP, after breaking the alliance, is figuring out how to run its 117 candidates. I'm also looking at 
and I'm not sure what AAP is up to, but it's trying to figure that out right now, what to do in Punjab. And then you have list of all these other people who were just talking about, the ones who are showing up on protest, ones who are talking about the farmers' issues, whether they are, even now women are leading in some of these things, in some of these protests. You know, when you have, uh, so I think this is, this, this is one of those times where um, diaspora, and I actually want to mention this. I was listening to Kamar Garewal and he was asked this question. He was another singer who's supporting this, who was asked, diaspora kithe khadi hai? And his, you know, where is diaspora and all this? And his statement is very valid. And I think we need to acknowledge that, that everyone looks up to diaspora. He says, they're always with us. They have always been with us. We need to figure out what we want and they will support it just like they've been supporting it, whether it was in the 80s, whether it was in the 60s, and whether it was in the last 30 years. So the whole point is that there is our, our siblings in Punjab, regardless of their religious or political persuasion, 80% plus people are affected by it. They are looking for our support. We must be ready to provide that support. And one of the supports I think we can provide is to create dialogues on this. Uh, Right now, this movement is leaderless. And this is one of my worries, if you ask me. One of my worries is movements for them to be sustained because I have seen uh, from periphery and from inside certain movements where they are not sustainable because it does not have strong, capable leadership. Leadership who understands how to do the right thing at the right moment, how to build alliances, how to restrain people who want to hijack it for particular purposes. I think if that organic leadership development, whether it is through emotional support, whether it is through funding supports, whether it is through infrastructure support, diaspora should play a role in it. And more conversation needs to take place uh, from a sick perspective as well. And I wanna zero in on that before I take your next question. Look, this issue has brought back what six had done in 1970s, which was an Anpursab resolution. The government of India and the India wasn't ready for it because the Sikhs through the Akalis, through the pen of Sardar Kapoor Singh, adopted by the Badals included through the Shomani Akali Dal, through Jagdev Singh Talwandi, all the leaders at the time, they actually proposed that India needs a federal structure. So this conversation about you know, national framework is needed. This is actually about constitutionality in India and the federalism in India, that debate. Sikhs were, this is 2020. Even if you go by 1970, that puts us 60, 50 years ahead of rest of India. Now the left and the center, people who believe uh, uh, in saving India from the dictatorships and these constitutional crises, they're all talking about having this federal structure. Six proposed that. We proposed it from Anandpur Saab. We must own it. It got presented as a successionist document. But now the India has come around, including everyone who's opposing this bill, not just the Sikhs, not just the Punjabis, all the farmer belts uh, uh, all over India are talking about, the economists are talking about it, the political thinkers are talking about it, and Sikhs had proposed that through the genius of Sardar Kapoor Singh and through the acceptance of the original Akalis, that this is what we should be allowing, a federal structure which allows its own laws, because right now this is a battle of laws, which without debate and in, a one, in an utterly undemocratic way are being thrown onto the public. And this is going to be very simple. This battle is going to be a long and harsh battle. I can tell you that right now. It can get very ugly very soon. This is probably the biggest test battle for the government of India right now, because they cannot say this is a sick issue. They cannot say this is just a Punjab issue. They cannot, they cannot bring the bogeyman of Khalistan, which they like to do every time. So what they really are figuring out, and I think the narrative of this will really matter as well. So the Sikh ideas really matter right now. The people of Punjab are accepting of those Sikh ideas, which they earlier did not. The people of India are accepting of those federal structure and constitutionality of India, the relationship between center and the state, the relationship between where the farmer should be able to, why is he being forced, uh, forced to sell to one structure in India versus any structure if they're really being capitalistic in anywhere in the world, including next to Pakistan or Afghanistan or through Central Asia to Europe, 
all those questions are coming into play. So I think this is going to be a defining moment. If Punjab, through the support of other farmers in other states, is able to break the national government's uh, dictatorial, undemocratic means here, it will be a great success. If they're able to break it, even then this will be a great success because this will redefine what happens in the rest of India and the rest of Punjab as well. So this movement right here could turn the tide, basically. But like you said too, there's no, it's leaderless and you need a good leader to go around. So I know we're getting a little long in this podcast and I want your final thoughts too, but in your final thoughts, six months from now, if we look at this movement, where should we be? And may, is there something between now and six months from now we should watch out for where, you know, Punjabis everywhere be like, nay, nay, kuch gar bar hai hun. So Harinder, I'll leave you with that. I'll, and uh, please give me your final thoughts too. Look, 100 years ago, British did the same thing. They created laws before the land colonizations and water tax bills. And you know that famous phrase, Pagadi Sambal Jatta? It was from that time led by uh, uh, in a farmer rally by Sardar Ajit Singh. Eventually, the Punjabi soldiers, afraid of losing them, afraid of losing the support of Punjabi soldiers, the government withdrew those bills. And 125 years later, now instead of the British state, we are dealing with the Indian state who are continuing to make the same policies which are harming the farmer and which are leaving them with no option other than to protest right now. So if the oppression is going to repeat, the protests are going to repeat as well. And the question is, can enough of alliance building, this is where the same element, element which understand the policies, element which understand the politics, element which understands Punjabiyat, element which understands six, those elements have to come together in order to defeat these new three farmer bills, which are really a mandate on what kind of Punjab and what kind of India, what kind of Punjabis want the Punjab to be, and what kind of Indians want India to become. So this is that moment. I think it can happen. It is. It always requires the grace of the divine for all, element, all elements to come together. But this is the best I have seen in my living memory where beyond caste and beyond religion, uh, Punjab is consolidating uh, in the name of their farmer, but for a larger narrative of what needs to happen within Punjab and India. So I think um, we must support and continue to learn about these uh, movements. We must also further those videos and those conversations which are making sense rather than the propaganda by the particular governments elements or particular people who are opportunists. So this requires serious thinking and we already are one step ahead that the culture creators are already supporting the right trend. We just need to make sure the culture creators are creating alliances with thinkers on this element. Arinder Singh, Senior Fellow at the Sikh Research Institute. Thank you for coming on this podcast, especially at this time to explain what's happening in Punjab and the situation with the farmers. Really appreciate it. I hope the listeners got to know exactly what's happening and hopefully you know, they, they support what's happening uh, with the Punjabi farmers too and they're on their side. So Harinder Singh, once again, thank you for being here. Vaigur Jika Khalsa, Vaigur Jika Khalsa. My pleasure, Gurfate. You are listening to Sick Cast by Sick Research Institute, illuminating every path.